today we're going to talk about Messier 28. Now, Messier 28 is a globular cluster, and there's many Messier objects which are globular clusters. These are very ancient star clusters, very compact. So many, many stars, maybe 100,000 stars. Ancient is probably 12, 13 billion years. So we really, things which have formed when the universe was 5, 10% of its current age. If you are a radio astronomer, Messier 28 is one of the really most famous Messier objects. And the reason for that is because it's got a millisecond pulsar in it. So most pulsars spin, so these are kind of city-sized things, about as massive as the sun, and they rotate typically tens times a second. Millisecond pulsars, like the one in M28, spin on their axis 300 and something times a second. In fact, there are a few examples of millisecond pulsars that spin nearly a thousand times a second. So they're really going some, pretty much at their maximum kind of rotation rate before they kind of fly apart. Millisecond pulsars are weak magnetically, and that's still quite strong compared to what we're used to on Earth. So for example, a typical millisecond pulsar might have only a magnetic field strength a million or 10 million times stronger than a fridge magnet, but really weak compared to these young pulsars. And so for a long time, the puzzle was, why would a really old neutron star be spinning so quickly? And the answer came because of detection using the Jodrell Bank Level Telescope by a group in Manchester. This is back in 1987, and they managed to observe M28, and they were looking for a pulsar in there. Pulsars with spin periods of a second are relatively easy, easy to observe with a radio telescope, but with a rotation period of only a few milliseconds, it's really tough going. So they had to kind of upgrade their instrumentation to be able to detect it and also use a supercomputer at the time to actually process the data to be able to find it. And in fact, it was the first of maybe 100 or so millisecond pulsars which have been found in globular clusters. In fact, Messier 28 is now known to have a dozen millisecond pulsars, albeit one which has been known about for a long time. And so the reason we think these ancient neutron stars that exist in these globular clusters have been spun up is because of their environment. Think about the sun. The sun has, is in a pretty low density environment and so that's good for kind of the planets around the sun. If it encountered another star, most likely the planets would fly off. And so it's out in the suburbs, the Milky Way, away from other stars. And so the chance of it colliding or coming into encounter with another star is pretty low. Whereas in the center of a globular cluster, there's over many billions of years, the chance of two stars interacting, in this case a neutron star and a kind of normal late type star, is pretty high. And so what we think happened to produce this millisecond pulsar is because it's accreted matter from its companion, basically the hydrogen envelope of the kind of dwarf star that it was next to adds material, so it gets more massive, maybe another tenth of solar mass, but also it's adding to its rotation rate. And so this is now, we think, the main mechanism for spinning up old ancient pulsars. And in fact, we do see a few examples of things called low mass X-ray binaries, which is actually the point at which the neutron star is, is it actually actively accreting material from a companion star. So we think these guys come before the millisecond pulsar phase. I think it's a, it's a very unusual set of conditions that allows you to study things which you wouldn't ordinarily study. And in fact, there's been searches for not only the pulsars themselves, but also maybe dead neutron stars which don't have the magnetic fields pointing towards the Earth, and also black holes. It's likely there's, there's going to be black holes, neutron stars, which we can't easily observe in the sense of these things, which may linger for a very long time. Some might get ejected from the cluster. But in general, we expect a fair number of neutron stars that we don't detect easily because they're so small and faint to be seen in these globular clusters. Professor, this star, the celebrity star in M28 that kicked off this area of research, has it got a name or? What, the pulsar? Uh, it's got a catalogue number. So if you want, I can tell you what its catalogue number is. Yeah, what is it? It's, its catalogue number is PSR 1937 plus 21. That was what it's first called. It's now one of 12 millisecond pulsars in the cluster, so it's got an A at the end. So it's the first of 12 millisecond pulsars in the cluster. So if we were to go out and look for M62 on the sky, it would be pretty small. It would be that tiny little thickness, uh, this little fuzzy blob, and we'd need to use binoculars or telescope to find it. However, if we were sitting at the galactic center and ignoring the fact that we'd be in the vicinity of a supermassive black hole and a whole bunch of stars, if we had a clear line of sight, to um, M62, it would be that much closer that it would actually be about that big on the sky. 